slide up a little bit and minimize it a little bit or maximize it go in First go in just a little bit zoom thing. Oh. There you go. But then we don't get the whole thing. Yeah, on but there. then you can just move it, move it back a little bit. Okay. Now we're okay. Good morning. This is the time and place for the planning hearing officer meeting of Wednesday, April the twenty second, two thousand and fifteen. My name is Vilia Zamaitis, and I'll be conducting the hearing as the hearing officer. We have one case on today's agenda, and the relevant exhibits are posted on the bulletin board directly behind me. This case involves a conditional use permit, so under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 3042 of the Glendale Municipal Code, the conditional use permit shall be granted if the four required findings are present. They are, one, that the proposed use will be consistent with the elements and objectives of the general plan, two, that the use and its associated structures and facilities will not be detrimental to the public health or safety, the general welfare or the environment. Three, that the use and facilities will not adversely affect or conflict with adjacent uses or impede the normal development of surrounding properties. And four, that the adequate public and private facilities such as utilities, landscaping, parking, traffic circulation measures are or will be provided for the proposed use. If the evidence presented in the application and at the hearing meets the criteria just described, then the planning hearing officer can either approve or impose conditions for approval on the case in question. If the findings of fact are not evident, then the request must be denied. Uh, public notice. Notification of this hearing was accomplished by the use of public notices, which were mailed to all property owners and occupants <coughs> located within 500 feet of the subject <coughs> property physically posted on the site in question and placed in the local newspaper. The hearing will proceed as follows. I will read the description of the application request. I will then read the reports received from other city departments and other letters or communications from interested parties. The case planner, Ms. Kathy Doherty, will then make a brief overview of the case, give analysis, and make a staff recommendation. And then the applicant will be asked to come forward stating both name and address and will be asked to present the case within a 15 time limit period. Others in support of or in opposition to the application and interested parties will be asked to come forward to speak, again clearly stating both name and address within a three minute time limit. Lastly, the applicant will be given the opportunity to make closing comments if desired in response to the testimonies given by the preceding speakers. The hearing will be closed and the case taken under submission. After the hearing, the decision will be prepared in writing and will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicant and to all parties who responded to the public notice either by speaking at this hearing or by submitting written responses and having provided their name and mailing address. The date of the decision letter will be the date appearing, the date of the decision will be the date appearing on the letter. Under the appeal provisions of Title 30.62 of the Glendale Municipal Code, the decision may be appealed to the Planning Commission within 15 days of the decision date. Anyone wishing to appeal may obtain the forms and brochures on the procedures from the Building and Safety Section Permit Services located on the same floor of this building. If you wish to speak, please write your name and address on one of the speaker cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to our planning assistant. I would also like to inform everyone that the official proceedings of the planning hearing officer hearing are recorded on tape as part of the public record. Which brings us to uh, today's agenda. Uh, the first case and the only case is a conditional use permit, case number PCUP142. 8738 for a project located at 2146 East Chevy Chase Drive. The applicant is the Self-Realization Fellowship Church and this project consists of an application for a conditional use permit to allow the continued use of existing church facilities in the ROS, the Residential Open Space Zone, located again at the address stated 2146 East Chevy Chase Drive, described as portions of lot 18 and 21 of the Hodgkin subdivision. Okay, and in terms of interdepartmental comments, the 
There are... There are no comments. No, no significant comments. Um, and there was one letter, I believe, in opposition uh, from a Ms. Karen Reagan George and a David Reagan George with regards to parking concerns and the spillover into the Chevy Chase Drive neighborhood. So, at this point, I'd like to turn to Ms. Kathy Doherty for a staff presentation. Okay, thank you. The approximately 17 acre site is located on the south side of Chevy Chase Drive and consists of two irregularly shaped lots. The site contains two buildings, a 15,179 square foot temple and a 7,955 square foot Sunday school building. The buildings are located on gra graded pads behind the parking area. Uh, with the Sunday School building set back 192 feet from the front property line and the temple is about 260 feet from the front property line. The, there's a large undeveloped hillside area behind the building and it slopes uphill. The pro parking area has 114 parking spaces with a five and a, five and a half foot high block wall and landscaping areas provided between the adjacent single family homes and the parking spaces. Access to the site is provided by a 30-foot wide driveway on Chevy Chase Drive, um, which have landscaped areas on either side. The Glendale Church of Religious Science purchased this property in 1963 and built the church in 1965. The church received its original conditional use permit in May of 1964, and a church has operated at this property for at the site since for about 50 years. The Self-Realization Fellowship has operated at this location since July of 2006. They acquired the property, as I mentioned, from the Church of Religious Science. Um, and previously, there was a daycare, preschool, kindergarten operated at this site. The Self-Realization Fellowship Church no longer operates the daycare and preschool, but does offer Sunday school classes on Sundays at 11, concurrent with the lecture service. The Sunday school classrooms are located in the building adjacent to the main temple. Um, regular public services are held at the temple Sunday mornings and evenings and Thursday and Friday evenings. Uh, they, they also offer eight commemorative services and four special services each year. As you mentioned, uh, no comments were received from other city departments, but we did receive a letter in opposition. Staff believes that the findings for the conditional use permit can be made and, re, um, and recommends that the crest be granted. Uh, that's all I have if you have any questions. Thank you. I have two speaker cards. Uh, Mr. Brian Shadel. My name is Brian Shadel. I'm at 3208 Humboldt Street, Los Angeles, 90031. I oversaw the preparation of the application documents and I thank Ms. Duarte and Oster, Mr. Roger Kiesel staff who helped in preparation and uh, submitting those documents. I'd like to introduce Mr. Schaefer who's going to give our presentation. Hi, my name is Hank Schaefer. I am a member of the church congregation. I live at, uh, the spelling of the name is S-H-A-E-F-F-E-R and uh, I reside at 825 Elyria Drive Los Angeles, 90065. So as the staff report indicates, um, this is a, an application really for the, for the continuation of an existing church use. Um, the the um, conditional use permit uh, has a sunset of 10 years, and so we're applying for uh, renewal of that uh, application. Um, in 2006, uh, the previous owner of this property, um, the Church of Religious Science, donated the property to Self-Realization Fellowship uh, to continue, uh, as it saw, sort of its, its, its mission, in a way, as, as, as much as it could. Uh, and and Self-Realization Fellowship is a religious organization that has uh, its history, it goes back to 1925, uh, it was founded by Paramahansa Yogananda, teaches meditation, 
uh, as a, a, a also a scientific approach to communion with God. Um, and uh, Self-Realization Fellowship Church was uh, incorporated in California in 1935 and has existed continuously since that time. Uh, since uh, SRF, I, we always refer to S- S- Self-Realization Fellowship as SRF, um, uh, has taken over the property. We um, did not continue the uh, preschool and um, kindergarten, or rather it was a, actually a, a, a preschool uh, and, uh, I guess, elementary operation that was there at the, at, at the site. Um, and we do, as was mentioned in the staff report and by Ms. Duarte, we do um, offer Sunday school. The Sunday school um, is... Uh, operates at the same time as our lecture service on Sunday morning, so it does not impose additional parking needs uh, on the site, which the school did. So um, there is existing a a standards variance for parking that was associated with the school, um, which um, is not really at this time needed uh, in in connection with the existing operations of of our uh, our, uh, temple. So the staff report, I believe, accurately sets forth all of the the relevant information um, regarding um, the uh, the description of our uh, application uh, and the site. Uh, So I I just refer to that and say that the applicant concurs in the the staff report rather than going over all of those, uh, the facts associated with it. we believe that um, the, uh, the required findings can be made, uh, the, f- the required f- four findings uh, regarding uh, uh, consistency with the general plan and zoning code, uh, the, that it will not be detrimental to the public health or safety uh, or uh, the general environment, that the use of the facilities will not adversely affect or conflict with the adjacent uses or impede normal development of surrounding property and that adequate public facilities do exist um, in the area. Um, In general, um, the general plan does uh, designate, uh, this is in the ROS zone, and um, uh, church use is a permitted use with a conditional use permit. And and, uh, so we are consistent with the general plan and and the zoning code. and uh, it is also uh, developed, the site is developed in an environmentally sensitive manner. And we're not in any way um, uh, proposing to alter uh, what has been done on the site. There's considerable open space. There's a very large um, hillside, maybe too large, <laughs> behind, the, uh, behind, behind the church, but it's very, uh, uh, very attractive, uh, attractively developed site. And in fact, as is indicated in the uh, staff report, which I didn't know, it does. Staff believes that it, the building uh, does qualify for historic uh, designation, which is interesting. I mean, it's an architectural uh, marvel in a way. It's quite attractive, and uh, we have no plan to alter that in any way. It'd be very difficult to do it, um, and um, nothing that we are doing will in any way. Uh, alter the site from uh, its current development or current use. Um, the, um, the site was actually developed before most of the houses in the area were built, and it is now fully built out um, houses on the Chevy Chase frontage. So it's not going to interfere with the development of the neighborhood in any way, and in fact has not uh, in the past, which is uh, uh, shown by the fact that it's been developed after the church was built. Um, we don't believe that it conflicts in any way with the, with adjacent uses. Uh, it is a consi- it is a um, it's developed on this kind of um, a flag type development with a long drive and set back as the staff report indicates the temple close to close to a football field from the road uh, and um, and the the uh, the Sunday school building a little bit less than that. And, um, of course, all public utilities do exist in the area. Uh, and uh, as I, I think I indicated, the, uh, the standards variance for parking is not really 
I think, necessary at this point, although we're, it exists. Um, we have no current plans to, uh, to alter the way we're, we're using the facility. So in, in some, I think that, that the, um, the required findings can easily be made. We believe that the, actually the church contributes uh, to the community. We've attempted to the best of our ability to improve the facility. We painted it re- recently. We, re- we paved and striped the parking lot. Um, we're putting a new sign, which is the other, other one was sort of falling down. And, um, we're, uh, and we've, we've re-landscaped and the place is very attractive. Um, we invite you to come visit. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. And just to reiterate, I believe, what you mentioned in your presentation, that the Self-Realization Fellowship has no intention of reopening the daycare or the preschool. That's correct. Only That's correct. for Sunday school purposes. Right. It's, it's right. For religious school purposes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, thank you. I have no other questions. I will be taking... This matter under submission, and so the hearing is now officially closed. You will be receiving a letter shortly in the mail regarding the decision. Thank you very much for coming.